We, we must have been the two tallest guys in late night. Oh, yeah. Well, let me ask but, you something. You're, you're, uh, because first of all, that suit, you did not get that off the rack, I'm no, guessing. No, no, no. Uh, you have someone who makes these for you. Yes. You are six feet. Nine. Six, nine. Uh huh. That amazes me because I'm used to being fairly tall. I'm about a little over 6'4". If I was in the NBA, I'd be a speedy little guy, wouldn't I? I'd <laughs> yeah. be like one of those little speedy guys. Exactly. In, in today's game, you would be very short. Yeah. I'd be and... a small, untalented man in the NBA. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't uh, my my say... small height would not be the only problem. There'd be I, other problems, too. I didn't want to say that. Yeah, I didn't want to say that. I'm You're glad kind. you said that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm curious. Uh, this, is, this is causes problems for you, everyone thinks well, it would be so great to be Magic Johnson, but six feet nine inches tall, you've actually broken, you broke equipment once at an amusement park, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. What did you do? Oh, man, what happened was I got on a, I was going on a roller coaster, mm -hmm. and you know, the bars that lock you in, uh, I had to fold my legs and sit like this, you know, right. really down low, right. so the bar could come over and lock me in. Right. Well, it threw the timing off the whole, uh, whole roller coaster. So, so everyone was killed. Every <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful story. Basically. Yeah. Just because you had to ride a yeah, roller so coaster. I had to ride. So it took us like 10 minutes to get me in there. Right, right. And so when I, when we finished the ride, it was about eight blue coats waiting for me. Yeah. And I was like, uh oh, what happened? I thought something had happened. Right. So they pulled me aside, said, uh, Mr. Johnson, you can never ride the roller coaster again. <laughs> That's so sad. Uh, uh, very sad. Here's so then you went to the teacups and broke those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You I just went around. Uh, everything at the park I should have broke. But uh, I had a good time, though. It was an experience. Now, you did a, I don't know who came up with the nickname Magic. But if you're going to pick a nickname, I would think that's one of the better ones to have. You know? Because a lot of people get saddled with a nickname, and then that is it. <laughs> so did you, did you have someone, I mean, who first of all came up with the idea of, let's call this guy Magic? Was that you? No, it wasn't me. It was a, a sports writer, writer back in Lansing, Michigan, when I was 15 years old. Right. And he said, hey, I want to give you a nickname. And you know, at 15, what do you know? Right. Nothing, really. Right, right. And so I said, OK, cool. And my friends are all laughing at me. So the guy said, uh, somebody's already called Dr. J and Big E. That was Elvin Hayes. Right. I want to call you Magic. So I looked at my boys. They looked at me. Is this guy kidding? Right, right. And I thought he was kidding, too. And the next day, he wrote the article, Magic, and it stuck ever That's since. That's giving away. that guy a lot of power. What if he had said, stinky, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're stinky. You know, and then that sticks. And like, you, no matter sticks. what you achieve, they're like, good job, stinky. stinky. And you're like, <laughs> uh, You had a different nickname for a while that you got rid of. Isn't that right? Yeah, I used to. Oh, man, a few of them. My, my family called me Junebug. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would not be nearly. And then Junebug yeah, won his yeah, fifth yeah. NBA title. Yeah, exactly. Go Junebug, go. That just wouldn't be very good. That would You're suck. right. And so you know, little, little E, EJ. You know, right, you come, right, right. And then the Lakers, they all called me Buck. Right. So that was my name with the Lakers. Right, right. Because I was Magic. Just, you can't beat that. No, That's you can't beat it. It's great. It's been good to me. Yes. Uh, my my mom, she doesn't like it, but it's been great. <laughs> really? Why doesn't your mom like it? Well, you know, of course, they give you Irvin, oh. and they want... <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with Irvin? That's what, Let that's me talk to her, that's yeah. Right. I'll explain to her. Irvin's okay, but no, it's not as good as magic. Well, well, the funny thing is, Conan, Irvin is not the reason that she lives in that big house. Now, I had to keep explaining. Right. Magic is magic, the reason. Yeah. <laughs> magic paid for this. Not yeah. Magic. Irvin's working in a shoe store somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, you are a uh, highly, not only achieved uh, great things uh, as, as an athlete, an amazingly successful businessman. And I was looking at your accomplishments today. You own 33 Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And that's on one city block. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a problem, by yeah, the way. Exactly. I think we have enough. Uh, you have a chain of movie theaters. Yes. Is that right? Yes, that's 24-hour right. gyms. You're part owner of the Lakers. Right. And then you own TGI Fridays. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, that's it. Do you go to TGI Fridays? <laughs> yes, I do. Right, right. There's I some good it. stuff at TGI yeah, Fridays. Yeah, there's some good stuff. Uh, and you have fat burger restaurants. Yeah, it's, it's a Southern California hamburger uh, stand, which we have 47 units. Right. I used to go to Fat Burger all the time. I, and then I was wondering, like, do they ever try and get you to change it to sound more health conscious, even if the burger's the same? You might not want to call it Fat Burger. Burger yes. Yeah. But you Try can... the artery clogger. <laughs> You're going to love it. 
<laughs> you, you got me on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, my favorite is you are partners in a bank with Janet Jackson. Yeah, we're, we're business partners. I see it. First of all, that sounds like the coolest bank in the world. <laughs> Where are you going? Janet Jackson and Magic Johnson's bank? I want to come. That sounds like a cool bank. The other thing is, I think if the problem with having a bank is that if someone hits you up for money and you own a bank, it's very hard to say, I don't know, it's not a good time for me right now. <laughs> you own a bank. You know what I mean? They can say, like, just take me to any one of your ATMs. <laughs> and, and it's been hard to turn people down because of that reason. Right, exactly. You're right. You're Especially right. the relatives. Right, right. <laughs> You own a bank. <laughs> I don't want to hear that you don't have any money right now. Now, one thing that set you apart, which I think is a great thing, especially in, in, when you consider the NBA today, is that you never cursed, you never trash-talked no. when you were a player. But people must have trash-talked at you. Mm -hmm. And how did you handle that? Did you just try and let it just wash over you? How did you tune that out? When well, someone's right there and they're just giving you a hard time, and they're saying all kinds of nasty stuff to try and get into your head. How did you respond? Well, it was funny because they'd be running their mouth, and I'd just say, I'd just point up at the scoreboard. Because <laughs> nine times out of 10, we were beating that same yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So that's and, all you had to do. I thought you were going to say, and then you pressed a button, and it fell on the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, pretty good, man. Can I see that? <laughs> Click. <laughs> No, I, I just let the scoreboard do the talking because when you're winning, at, at that time, I didn't trash talk. The biggest right. two trash talkers ever in history of basketball is Michael Jordan and Larry Bird. Right. But they can back it up. Yep. See, that's what's so great about basketball players in my day. Michael Jordan could back it up. Yeah. He would let you know he's killing you and he would kill you. He would score 50, and Larry Bird would say, I'm going to score 40 tonight and go out and score 40. Right. And, and win the game. Now guys talk trash and they can't play. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but you know what? That's exactly what I would be if I was in the NBA. I would be that guy like, you're gonna, and then I would accomplish nothing. <laughs> but I'd be trash talking more than anybody. Yes, yes, and that's what we have more today than we have actual great basketball players. Right, right. So we have to change that, so to speak. Now let's talk about Who's Got Game. This is an interesting idea. This is, uh, this is your show. Yes. Tell us about it. It's on it's, MTV. It's a street bar reality show on MTV starting this Sunday at 10.30. And actually, Snoop Dogg's show premieres before my show. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it is, we went around the country and casted different uh, players from around the country. And these are guys that, that are amazing players, but they play street on the, ball just on only. the street. Yep. They play in courts just around the country. Around, at their hometown, mm -hmm. and they never uh, played in the NBA or any professional league. And this is their shot. This is their chance to be on TV for the first time. People can watch them play, because street ball is really big like in New York, it's really popular right, here. Right. Chicago, you go crowds around. gather yes. and watch these games. Yeah, and, and these guys have names too. They have helicopter and this and that. So uh, white chocolate, and they have different type of white names. chocolate. Yeah, yeah. I wish and, I had grabbed that one. <laughs> <laughs> and Late that, night with white chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and they're legends. Yeah. And they're, they're like Michael Jordan in their hometown. Sure. And so... Uh, they all compete against each other. Compete against each other for $100,000 in a court renamed and refurbished in their hometown. And right. so there'll be uh, one winner after the... the in the 10th episode, so it's amazing. It's and you really have women great. in there too. Women, we have 10 guys, That's two amazing. women, and we also tell the backstory of them as well. We follow them around to their hometown as well as they all live in the same place. So, you know, a That's lot of That's a part of all these reality shows. Exactly. Make them hate each other yes. by having to yes. share a bathroom. Yes, and, and, and you know what's funny? In sports and in this show, they end up supporting the winner. Right. Really, because that's what sports is about. We really respect the person who is the best. Like, no, I, I don't hate Michael Jordan. He was the best. I, don't, I didn't hate Larry Bird. You know, we just liked each other on the court when we went after the championship. Right. But at the end of the day, we respect each other because he's a talented guy. You mm -hmm. have to give it up to talented players. Mm -hmm. Much different than in other arenas where, you know, they dislike people. Right, right. Or they try and run him down or right. say they could never take me. Oh, yeah. That's trash talking. <laughs>
Yeah, that's just my whole mentality. <laughs> that's how I am. I'm like, what are you talking about? Support the guy. No, run him down. You've got it all wrong, Magic. Uh, Who's Got Game premieres this Sunday night yeah. at 1030 on uh, MTV. Yes. And we just loved having you on the show. I'm Thank you very much for being here. Anytime. Anytime. Magic Johnson, Tom Green coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.